Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. This week I'll be taking a look at the Tamiya Universal Carrier in 135th scale, and then fully building and painting it. This video will soon be followed by an in-depth diorama build. Enjoy! As I expected from a Tamiya kit, almost all the parts are crisp and free of any flash. Some small amounts of flash were found on the wheels, but this was easy to correct. Excess plastic was removed from the parts with a hobby blade and various sanding sponges. All parts were glued using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement with the use of soup glue in some areas to give extra strength. I used a rough sanding sponge to give some texture to the leather seat backs, though this was a very subtle texture once the paint was applied. I replaced this grab handle with a metal replacement. This allowed me to bend it to add some damage and it lacked any mould lines or nasty flashing. There were a few gaps when it came to building the wheel assemblies, so these were easily dealt with using some Bayeco model putty.
The wire connecting the two search lights on the front of the vehicle was too chunky and unrealistic, so I sliced it off and replaced it with a nice copper wire. Painting began with a simple grey primer coat, as per usual. However, this time I chose not to add a pre-shading layer. Instead, I will varnish over the solid paint layer, then use the hairspray technique to add some variation in colour. You can find the paint mix that I used for the green in the description below. I mixed my own as I didn't have the right colour required, so obviously you can buy the exact colour if you feel like it. The leather seats were painted with bike or leather brown and I'm sure none of you could have guessed that. Following another gloss varnish layer, all the decals are applied using micro set and micro sole. The weathering of the model was commenced with the usual Tamiya brown pinwash. Fun fact, I'm still using the same bottle of the stuff that I was using about a year ago. This stuff lasts for a while. Oil paints were used as a base layer for mud on the lower part of the hull. This was followed up with a thick mixture of water and dry pigments, and then finally some thick mud ground texture from Vallejo.
The rubber tracks were fairly easy to fit, but the join between the two ends was far from ideal. They were slightly too short and gave an unrealistic finish. So here is the finished model. The kit actually gave a surprisingly effective end result with lots of added extras and an amazing five figure bonus. I had a lot of fun constructing this one and the diorama is going to be a great build as well. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all next time. Bye!